All right, I think we have a quorum. Um, so hi, everybody. Welcome to the Nurse Data Seminar. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I'd like to first uh, introduce our speaker. Uh, so uh, we're really lucky to have Manalis Papadakis from the NVIDIA Legate team. Um, he recently received his PhD from Stanford in computer science, and now he's a senior software engineer working on NVIDIA's uh, Legate project. So thank you so much and uh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Thanks everybody for having me. Uh, yes, so Legate, what, what is Legate? Uh, what is this project? Let's see. Uh, all right, what, let's start with a little bit of motivation, what we're trying to do. Um, here is our vision for um, running HPC applications with Python. Um, so what does it look like to write a, uh, to do scientific computation in Python on a single core today? Uh, let's say I want to do a combustion simulation uh, with chemistry. Um, natural choice would be would be NumPy. I have I can have multidimensional arrays to express the different um, degrees of freedom that I want to simulate. Uh, I can use nice slicing syntax to uh, to update uh, with with uh, update every cell in parallel. Um, so that, that is good for my simulation. Let's say uh, later on, I want to do a statistical analysis on the results of the simulation uh, on the order of the different species. Uh, I might uh, pass the data on to pandas. Uh, I can do that on a single node uh, without incurring additional copies, without needing to uh, transfer the data. Uh, the different libraries generally uh, know, uh, can recognize each other's um, data format through, uh, through introspection, uh, through the dynamic uh, type system. Uh, so all of this works nicely. Uh, I can pass it in, uh, everything runs on the same node. I can run the two, uh, the two applications uh, in lockstep or at different times, um, and they all run together nicely. Uh, I can even have the, the, the decisions of pandas um, flow back into the simulation, uh, suggest different configurations, see if the simulation is, um, if the results are stable. Uh, it all works nicely. It can all uh, work in the same context. Uh, and I can, uh, even on this, on the one node that I am, I can, uh, I can visualize um, the results of the simulation. Uh, I can even use, uh, on the side of pandas, I can use a classifier to uh, uh, process the results of the simulation and uh, uncover um, uh, uncover different characteristics of the, of the, of the flame wavefronts. Uh, I can visualize that uh, either in a new library or can even reuse the different uh, the, uh, library that I've used previously. Um, so it all works together. It's all pretty seamless. Um, and that's on the single node. And that's what we, we think uh, the situation should be on, uh, on the supercomputing front as well. Um, however, the, the reality of it today is, is a little different. Um, let's say you're trying to program a supercomputer. Um, now, the, uh, of course, the single node NumPy implementation is not going to be sufficient anymore. You're going to need to uh, switch to a, um, an explicit parallelism framework like NPI. Uh, now you need to do a management of resources. Uh, you need to decide where the simulation will run where pandas will run, um, where uh, your uh, uh, visualization will run, and um, the visualization might not even uh, run on multi-node. Um, so that needs to be a decision you make up front. Um, and now, of course, there is no shared memory representation. Uh, everything, uh, a lot of what you do needs to go through disk. Uh, so now you have this latency, this added latency to think about. Um, and of course, uh, it's, it's much harder to, um, uh, to move data back and forth, have the different parts of the application um, control each other. Um, now, uh, again, there is no, uh, there is no one uh, version of the data uh, that, uh, that, you can, uh, that, that exists. There are different parts of it that you're managing yourself. Uh, so you need to manage the communication. You need to decide uh, the, the minimum amount of data that you need to transfer and when you need to do that. Um, uh, also, you have your accelerated hardware, so you need to uh, you need to make use of it. You're gonna try. You may want to uh, try and use an accelerated uh, version of your of your linear algebra. 
Uh, now you have more decisions have to do with uh, having to do with the heterogeneity of the hardware and how you launch the, uh, the work. Um, you have, for example, to decide uh, whether you're going to run in uh, a process per node or process per GPU, and uh, that might there might be um, different capabilities that each of them uh, allows you to do, and one of them might be uh, might be easier or harder than the other. Um, so all of these are obviously are not insurmountable problems, but they make they add a lot of friction, and they're they're a far cry from how. Um, you, you're running Python applications on a, on a single node today. Uh, and the goal of this project is to strive towards uh, something closer to the previous slide, uh, even on an HPC setting. Um, so in, in broad terms, the, the goal of this project is to enable, enable users to program these large heterogeneous accelerated machines uh, the same way they program uh, on, a single, on a single core. And um, uh, center to this is the uh, is the understanding that sequential semantics are really necessary for for programmers to um, have uh, be, be productive and understand what their code is doing, um, and also to achieve uh, uh, interoperability between libraries. So the moment you introduce um, distribution into the into the question and, and, and explicit parallelism, uh, a lot of the composability goes out the window. Um, so uh, we want to provide tools to do this, and of course, uh, these would be useless unless we also allow uh, our our uh, if our implementations allow the user to extract the same amount of parallelism that they would um, if they were uh, to write this explicitly. So that's the general, that's the, the high level goal. And, and how we're doing this is we are, um, we are writing distributed implementations of familiar APIs, sequential APIs. Uh, and we want the, um, the API to be as compatible as possible. Uh, we want just a single uh, import statement to give you the same behavior as you would on, uh, on a single node. Uh, no, so no API changes, no not having the user manage the distribution or tune the uh, um, the split of the data, uh, no explicit parallelism whatsoever. Um, have a single uh, specification of the program that can run on anything from from a GPU to a cluster, uh, and uh, maintain the sequential semantics and and take advantage of the of the of the ample parallelism that exists. Uh, within these APIs, uh, within a, 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 an action like a uh, uh, like a matrix multiply on NumPy, discover that parallelism and uh, take advantage of it automatically without having the user uh, point it out to us. Um, so that is the high level um, the high level goal of the of the project. Uh, where we stand is that we had an open source release uh, on GitHub uh, earlier this year. And we have two libraries so far. We have uh, NumPy and Pandas um, with, with support for um, uh, some, uh, some, some high use uh, operations, some uh, critical operations. And this is very much a work in progress. We are adding, we're adding support for different things. And um, we'll talk later about uh, how you can influence that. Um, here is a, an overview of the Legate stack. We have the different libraries that I talked about. Uh, we have Legate, NumPy, and Pandas so far working on more. Uh, they all sit on top of the core of Legate that uh, translates, that helps translate uh, all of the APIs uh, to run on top of the Legion runtime. Uh, Legion is a, uh, a, a task-based runtime, um, came out of uh, an HPC setting uh, and uh, is is used. I'll show you in the next few slides how we use it to um, uh, to run applications uh, like Legate, NumPy, and Pandas on a distributed setting. Uh, what the, the the pertinent features are, um, and uh, in the bottom, when we reach the when we reach the level of a single node, we want to reuse all the all the excellent work that has come before us with um, uh, the different accelerated libraries. I, I note here a lot of the libraries available. Uh, for a single GPU uh, out of NVIDIA. Um, we also use OpenBLAS for, um, for, for CPUs, for example. Um, so uh, yes, uh, on, on the single node, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, work to stand on. And uh, I'll show you how we can take advantage of these accelerated libraries uh, in, in a distributed execution. Uh, there's two features of Legion that are uh, very uh, important to us, uh, the, the, the transparent parallel execution 
um, which I'll show in this slide, um, and, and the common data model I'll show in the next one. Um, so we have the application here. It mixes different, it's written in Python. It mixes different API calls. Um, what Ligate does then is to break down these, um, these task calls, in, uh, these uh, function calls into tasks, which are units of uh, parallel execution for Legion, uh, marked with their, their, the, the data that they use. Uh, and it's then up to the Legion runtime to, um, to take all of these, which are uh, written, in the same, uh, written in the same format and marking the data that they use and compute a dependence graph. Um, that outlines the, the dependencies of these individual tasks. Um, and then it's up to the runtime with some help from uh, some guidance from the library to, um, uh, to um, uh, execute this graph. And the graph uh, doesn't need to be executed in any particular order. Any order that um, uh, respects the dependencies is, is good. Uh, it can run uh, on uh, it can run different tasks on CPUs and GPUs and uh, try and overlap communication and computation and emit the required copies to make everything, um, to make the sequential, to respect the sequential semantics of the original execution. Uh, and it can also um, spread the work across different nodes and uh, make sure everything happens on the appropriate, the appropriate time and with the appropriate communication. Um, so that is the first part of Legion the, uh, that we use the, the asynchronous execution. Uh, the other uh, very important part is the, is the common data model. So uh, Legion's uh, notion of a region is, the, is a distributed collection uh, that uh, is, can also be partitioned across, uh, is, uh, can also be partitioned across the machine. Uh, and the different libraries in Legate um, can understand the, uh, uh, the underlying data representation, uh, the underlying uh, Legion data representation, uh, and can avoid uh, can avoid copies. Um, what's it? So this is very similar to what Arrow does on a single uh, Apache Arrow does on a single node, uh, but in a distributed setting, there's the added complexity of having to talk about data distribution uh, or partitioning. Um, and because everything is backed by the same uh, by the same data representation. Um, different libraries can query the, uh, the existing partitions of the data and either, either, either reuse them to avoid any repartitioning um, or require a partitioning for the particular, for the specific operation they're about to, uh, they're about to compute. So for example, NumPy might prefer a special decomposition of the data where uh, pandas might prefer a column-based um, column uh, decomposition. Um, all of these can coexist and they are kept in sync by the runtime, uh, which makes sure to only uh, on in, an, in when repartition is necessary, it will only uh, move the minimal amount of data um, to make sure the, the new partition is valid. Um, so with these two um, with these two features, uh, we built uh, the different libraries on top of on top of a common uh, backend. All right, so that's that was the the high level overview of how. Um, how Legate works. I will now switch to a demo I've prepared for um, for uh, Legate on Cori GPU. Uh, what this demo uses is the uh, the quick start scripts. Uh, I'll have a link to this page later uh, in the talk. Also, um, these are um, these are uh, specialization specialized installations of uh, of Legate on different machines, and I've done. Um, I've, I've made these configurations for Cori GPU, so I'll show you how you can you can you can run the same commands on on your own. Um, hopefully, the the instructions are easy to follow, um, and it will just be a single line to run any of these programs uh, on any scale that you need. Um, let's start with a simple um, with a simple uh, Jacobian um, uh, stencil. Uh, so I have this uh, simple um, uh, this this short code. Uh, the the part to focus is here, the main loop, um, where we perform a stencil, a four point stencil, uh, and compute a norm, and then uh, print out some statistics every hundred iterations, and then on every iteration we check if we've reached the the norm target, uh, so we can stop the um, uh, we can stop the, the iteration short. 
Um, we're not gonna reach that in this presentation. I'm gonna stop it a little early um, uh, just so it doesn't take too long. And so I've added another, another check here for max iteration. Um, so this code is uh, more or less more or less pure NumPy, and we have only changed the um, the import statement here. Um, so let's try and run this. I have I'm going to use the um, the run.sh script from the quick start directory that I showed before. Uh, I'm going to specify that we're going to run on an eighth of a query GPU node, so that will be 10, uh, 10 virtual cores and, and one GPU. Uh, and then I will add my my uh, program, uh, and then just I'll, I'll I'll go through this option in a minute. But um, for now, let's just start it. Um, you see, it will uh, will create an output directory. It will show you what uh, what command is being used to uh, submit a batch script. Um, it 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 does all this internally. You don't need to run a run a batch script uh, um, on your own. Uh, submit the job and. Um, uh, show you what ends up being submitted to SRUN. Um, and you can also see that it indeed asked for um, uh, 10, 10 cores and one GPU. Uh, anyway, so here is the, um, the output. Um, every 100 iterations, we get uh, the norm, and the norm is, uh, is indeed decreasing. Um, what uh, what I added here is this profile um, profile option so that we will get a, a legion profile of this run. Uh, it, without it, then this would have been the only output that we get. Um, but here we got the profiler output and then the, the script that processes it. So now we have some visualization files to look at. Uh, so I'm gonna switch to my local node and uh, pull the files uh, that we just created on my local machine. So we can take a look and I will add my password. So everything is here. So I'm gonna switch to the um, local directory and this was the directory that was just created. So let's see what's going on. Um, so here is a, the output of the, of the Legion profiler. Uh, every every line is a specific processor. So we have the the GPU line and the uh, the Python line, and uh, and these two that we're not going to pay too much attention to for this talk. Uh, there is the uh, the CPU, which only runs profiling work in this example, and the utility, which is the the Legion runtime analysis. Um, this empty space in the front is um, uh, GPU kernel uh, loading, so loading the code on the GPUs. This is where the actual application started. Um, and if we expand, we'll see that um, all of the time was spent in Python. Uh, so this is just executing the Python script. Um, and really nothing ran on the GPU. There's only this small finalization uh, piece. Um, so what happened here? Uh, here it was the original uh, the original script, and as you can see, the size of the matrix was 100 by 100. Um, so what uh, Legate decided, what Legate's heuristics decided, is that this is not worth going through the overhead of Legion to execute and going through the overhead of launching kernels and um, transferring data back and forth between the CPU and the GPU. Uh, so it decided to just run it uh, as, as unchanged NumPy. Uh, let's see what happens if we increase the size a little bit. So I'm going to make a, a change to this script. I'm going to use uh, a different version where this uh, matrix is, uh, is increased to 7K by 7K. So I'm going to run the same command for b.py. So again, on one GPU, and same example, larger, uh, larger array. So we're going to run this. Um, we have about 10 seconds if you have a really, really quick question. Otherwise, we'll just wait. Yeah, quick question. Can you point back to the page where you had the directions for a Cori GPU? Yes, I will have that over here. So this is just the same things I'm going to show, but in slides, just in case the thing didn't work. Uh, here's the page. Um, and uh, Thanks. Yep, 
let me see if this is uh, still running. Still on this page. Um, yeah, this is there. There's there's a lot more um, configuration you can do when you're uh, when you're building uh, Legate. For example, skip um, support for GPUs or do other things, and even more on how to run. So running, uh, for example, multi rank on multi rank on the same node. Uh, but these scripts should be enough um, for Cori GPU. Um, it should be a reasonable default starting point to use. Um, and if you have different needs, let us know. All right, so this should be 11.21.13. There it is. So this is now uh, a larger, the same application, larger, um, larger array. So as you can see, there is more, a lot more activity on the GPU, uh, on the GPU timeline. I'm gonna just hide these for now. Uh, there is some use of the of the frame buffer or, or, or GPU device memory, um, and there is some activity on the channel or the um, the copy um, uh, where we're tracking the copies happening between different memories. So let me zoom in a little bit to see what's going on. Uh, as you can see here, these are the, the GPU tasks that are running. Uh, so we have something like an add operation and multiply and reductions. Um, so things that are used to implement the, um, the loop, the main loop of the program. And it looks like there is the Python task, which is waking up. There's some, there's some gaps in the timeline. It looks, sorry, there, it looks like there's the, the Python task that is waking up and the GPU is pausing, and then the GPU is uh, resuming. Uh, and there seems to be some transfers, and this is between the same memory. So this is, a, this is a, an intra-device copy. And this is about the size of uh, 373 megabytes. That's about the size of, um, of one array. So, um, so better, better than before, but there is still this, um, this uh, handoff going on uh, seems to be going on between the GPU and the uh, and the Python code. Um, so what is going on here? Um, this is a common um, uh, this is a common uh, thing that happens uh, when we are running. Um, this is a common thing to watch out for uh, when building uh, on top of Legion or similar synchronous uh, execution frameworks. Um, the the framework will, will work best when the control code can run ahead and emit work um, uh, ahead of the actual, uh, of the actual uh, GPU or other processor that's performing the computation. Um, and that is because that's how we can hide the, the latency of, of dynamic runtime analysis. It is by having uh, queuing up a lot of work for the for the processor that we're trying to use uh, and having the control code run ahead. Uh, and in this case, um, we're not doing that as effectively because on every time step, we're taking the, the norm here and we're immediately blocking um, on the loop and, and reading the value of the norm. So the whole program has to wait for all the work on the GPU to finish before it can continue and emit more work. And um, that, um, that is something that sometimes you can, uh, you can change. You can change the code to, uh, to avoid having that and give the, give the program uh, a little bit, of, uh, little bit of way to move ahead and, and, and queue up a lot of work and then have the GPUs be, be more full more of the time. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to have uh, another copy of this program um, where instead of checking the, um, the, the norm every time step, instead I am only going to compute it every 100 time steps uh, and then block on it. So uh, we will give the, um, the control program a little bit more room to, to go ahead and, and emit, uh, emit useful work. Um, and this, you know, this, this might be something you can or or might, you might be able to do for your application. Uh, it might um, converge a little bit slower, uh, you know, a, a few more iterations. Uh, it might take a couple more iterations for it to, to converge because you're not checking as often, but, um, 
the added uh, the added parallelism uh, may well make up for it. Um, so I will just run the same program uh, with uh, under these conditions, and let me just go up a little bit to see how much the older code took. The older code took uh, 16 seconds or so. Um, this should take a little bit less time. Uh, and I will do the same uh, the same thing here and show it um, show the profile and uh, and see how that changed. Um, this example was inspired by a, a question on the um, on the legate uh, bug tracker um, uh, where somebody was asking well, why why is this being so slow and part of the part of the story was the size was not really something that legate thought, was worth bothering with, and part of it was the um, the waiting on the main loop that was causing um, it was uh, causing the uh, execution to stall. That is what happens in demos. Okay. So that is 11.27.10. So let's go look at that real quick. Uh, and here again, let me hide some irrelevant stuff and open up these. And as you can see, you can see the different, the, 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 the 10 hundreds of iterations. Um, and you can see that there is uh, still some, some blocking every hundred iteration. Um, but at, from that point forward, there is there there is the the copy that is required to perform the um, the the norm calculation. But then you can see that from this point forward, after we've checked the norma, we started um, uh, emitting work again. Uh, even though the the Python program wakes up once in a while, or once the the queue becomes full, um, the the GPU will pick up work. The uh, once the queue uh, empties out a little bit, the Python program will be resumed and it will add a little bit more work to the queue. Uh, but this continues with minimal blocking on the on the GPU. Uh, Minimus, uh -huh. we have a question in chat from Jason Lee. Yes. yes. Uh, how much overhead um, does the profiler add to the runtime? Not too much. Uh, so here, the profiler is really running on the CPU processor. So it shouldn't, it's, it's all these tiny tasks and it, they're running on a separate uh, core that, um, that is allocated for for CPU work, but in this case, just uh, um, just the just the profiling. Um, I don't have concrete numbers, but I uh, it hasn't been. I mean, it's not it's not affecting the uh, the GPU uh, work uh, very much. Um, I, I my personal um, experience has been that the overhead is is minimal. Um, uh, I, but uh, I don't have concrete numbers for you, but definitely I, I wouldn't worry too much about the, the overhead of the profiler, um, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Can I ask a kind of related question? So yeah, if you have these other, these other um, cores, how is Legate deciding, or I guess is it Legion deciding where to place, you know, the work on a GPU versus other cores or... So yeah. that's so so Legion doesn't make these decisions for you. Legion will so the the, the underlying uh, layer uh, does not make these decisions for you. It expects it 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 provides you the ability to run on on anything you need, and uh, will make sure that wherever you choose to run um, will give you the same result. But or but um, the decision itself is not made for you. It's made by the by the application. In this case, it's made by Legate. Um, Legate has some heuristics. Uh, I showed you a, a, one of the simpler ones, which is: is it even worth uh, putting this data on the device memory to do operations on it? Um, there, there's similar decisions on how many GPUs to use and. Um, um, like what layout, what data layout, you know, to use uh, structive arrays, for example. Um, so all of those decisions are made by, by the part of the application that's called the mapper. And the mapper can make these decisions uh, uh, based on the specifics of the machine. Um, the, so in Legate, we have some heuristics to do that. 
uh, different applications, different when we move to different libraries, the heuristics may need to change for the for the specific needs of those libraries. So okay. yeah. Does it is there some kind of auto tuning or um, there is uh, a um, so the mapper interface um, has there is capability for auto tuning. We have uh, there is a project in the in the broader Legion um, ecosystem called the Auto Mapper, which does tries to auto tune this decision, um, and it's it's in development. Um, for Legate in particular, we would like to come up with something that requires can work with no. Um, you can make these decisions based on the program itself and not, and not can work without any input from the user. Um, there may be ways for the user to, uh, to hint, but um, we would like to make these decisions um, at the level of lead gate. Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, anything else? Actually, while we're asking for other questions, let me run the same code on two nodes, uh, or sorry, on two GPUs real quick, um, just so we can see what that looks like. But uh, if you have more questions, please um, um, please let me know while we're waiting for this. Uh, if you wanted to use the NVIDIA Insight Systems Profiler, would that work and show you kind of mm -hmm. the Legion information? Uh, it will work. There is a dash dash NSYS uh, option on on run on on, Le on the legate uh, on the legate script runner. Uh, it will dump out uh, the inside profiles. You can load those um, nor as as normal. Uh, what what those will show you are a similar timeline, but. Um, like in, in this view, we essentially see these blocks. Uh, what's happening within every one of these blocks is that a kernel is being launched and data is being copied. Uh, so what the Insight Systems Profiler will show you is what goes on into e within each one of these boxes. Um, so you'll have a better idea for how much time is spent waiting on a copy versus executing a kernel or something. So I'm just gonna do the same thing here. That's the last one. This is a, this is a two node, uh, two GPU job. So there will be two GPU timelines. Um, uh, this, this is not the, we're not gonna see any incredible speed ups or anything at this scale. But um, what I wanted to show is that um, we have a similar, uh, similar picture here with the two GPUs performing, um, uh, the two GPUs getting filled um, and the Python processor again waking up periodically to queue more work. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the bit to note here is that um, we now have uh, a transfer between GPU device memories and um, this based on the sizes, about 40, 54 kilobytes. Um, that is about the size, that is exactly the size of a, um, of the boundary between two. Uh, between the, the two, two halves of the domain. So what happened here is uh, legate NumPy um, split the, the, the array between the two, the two GPUs that are gonna run. And on every iteration, it needed to, uh, to do a halo exchange. This is a, this is a one point uh, stencil. So however, legate decided to do the, the, the split, either a length uh, column wise or row wise, it's gonna be the same. Uh, the same amount of data, um, one uh, one uh, rows or columns worth of data, and that's what we see here. We see uh, the copies in both directions, and the one copy that's needed for the um, for the um, uh, the the uh, the norm computation. So that's all for demos. Doing okay on time. 
yes, so the slides will also have the same pictures uh, if you want to review those later. Um, here is the, the quick start page if you want to try it. Uh, there's a little bit of a build. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, here's some more, uh, some larger benchmarks we've run. This is a, this, these are all on a, a internal NVIDIA uh, SuperPod with uh, a, a 100 DGXs, uh, a 100 DGXs. Uh, this is a conjugate gradient example that you see on the left. Um, we see uh, good scaling up to weak scaling up to in the hundreds of GPUs, uh, drops off a little bit up to a thousand, um, but certainly, uh, but certainly runs at that scale. Um, on the one GPU, we're similar to Kupai, so our our kernels are um, are doing something reasonable, uh, and of course we are um, orders of magnitude better than running on uh, on NumPy. Uh, this is uh, a code that's similar to the one that I showed on the demo. Uh, this is taken from a, a CFD course on Python, uh, CFD on Python. Uh, taken, we take it, we took the same code and run it uh, and scaled it up, um, just replacing NumPy with legate NumPy. Um, again, good scaling, um, up to uh, hundreds of thousands of GPUs and um, similar on one node to Kupai. Uh, escaping from from legate NumPy a little bit, uh, a lot of exciting uh, results on pandas. So this is a micro benchmark uh, that uh, Wan Shan ran. Um, this is um, uh, just this code that you see on the top left, uh, more, more or less this code. Uh, and it, 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 this is the yellow line on the diagram. And you'll see that it gets um, almost the same performance as a full MPI-based implementation of the same benchmark. Um, so quite, quite proud of that. And um, in terms of comparing uh, sort of apples to apples, we compared it with um, a similar a similar way to achieve distributed uh, pandas, distributed data frame computation, uh, namely Dask uh, and QDF, with some different configurations, either with uh, default Dask or um, a specialized uh, specialized uh, library for um, for joins and. Uh, we 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 scale much better than than these these other libraries and um, even to scales that they they that Dask currently cannot scale to. And uh, on the more realistic side of things, uh, we took a uh, the mortgage data example, which is a full um, uh, a full workflow uh, using uh, analyzing uh, the mortgage data for the past. A uh, number of years uh, using XGBoost, and we took the the ETL side of that uh, of that workflow uh, and ran it uh, with uh, Dask QDF uh, or Legate NumPy, uh, sorry Legate Pandas, uh, and and we are uh, 2.7x faster. And this is this is an actual example. So there's a lot of communication. It's it's an I/O bound uh, it's an I/O bound application. Um, so we also compared uh, purely the computation and were. Uh, we're cut quite faster there uh, as well. So that's it. That's all I had to. Uh, that's all I had to show you on on Legate. Um, I showed you. I gave you a demo. I, I, I talked a little bit about how Legate works internally, and then showed you how you can use it, and um, gave you uh, uh, showed the commands that you can use yourself to run on on Core GPU right now. And uh, if uh, if we get access to to Perlmutter. Um, we'll also do the same there, um, uh, if possible. Uh, so, what uh, here's what I, uh, we would would love we would love from you. Um, it, it would love it if you could um, uh, take a look at the instructions, see uh, see how easy or hard it is for you to use, and um, report uh, any issues that you're undoubtedly are going to find. Um, please report those. Um, uh, if you have an existing code that uses one of our um, libra libraries that we've already that we already cover, um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, especially if you have a, a program that uh, derives its uh, its uh, scale by operating on large arrays, um, that's how uh, that's the best way for Legate to extract parallelism, have uh, operations with large uh, on large collections. Um, Talk, if you please please talk to us about that. Um, we uh, you know if you if you would like 
to, uh, to if you've already scaled your code using MPI or some other framework and would like to see, we'd love to know if we can, um, if we can scale the original uh, single core code uh, better than, than the alternatives. Um, if you have other Python libraries that we're not using and, and, and think Legate is neat, then um, please let us know. Um, the more interest we have, uh, the more we can push for, uh, for, for, for more libraries internally. Um, if you just want to tell us, um, you know, this, is, this something, is this something that intrigues you or is this something that, or is there something we're missing in, in how uh, real scientists are, are, are scaling real applications? Uh, we'd love to know. Um, and on the on the more um, on the more uh, practical side, um, once you take a look at the at the scripts, uh, please please let us know what um, what would make it easier for you to try it out. Um, how do you normally uh, use libraries on your on your workflow? Um, there the emails right there. Please um, please let us know. We'd we'd love to hear from you. <laughs>